Hello, everyone. I almost said good morning because it is still morning here in not so sunny Seattle where I'm at today. Um, but it's afternoon there and I'm very happy to to be with you. My name is Mary Little and I'm a territory sales representative for Wiley's Finest. First off, I really want to congratulate all the folks there at Tulsi on their two year anniversary and say thank you, Travis, for inviting me to be part of your celebration today. Um, just a little bit about me. I've been in the natural products industry for about eight years now, and I come from a background in holistic nutrition and nutritional therapy. And I love sharing what I've learned with, um, with other people every chance that I get. Today, my presentation will essentially be in three parts. Um, first, we're going to talk about Wiley's Finest, who we are, what we do, and what we believe in. And from there, we'll go a little deeper into omega-3 nutrition and uh, why it's so important for everybody. At the end, I will show you a few of our best-selling omega-3 products, including our new exciting vegan omega-3s. And if there's any time after that, then I hope to give you a preview of our other brand new uh, product, which is a huge game changer in heart health but actually has no omega-3s in it. So if you're all ready, let's get started. So since the birth of Wiley's Finest in 2012, we've been known for and have built our success on providing the finest omega-3 fish oil products on the market. And many consumers just like you have asked the question, you know, what makes you so different from the dozens of other fish oil options on the shelf? Now, while I'll admit that there are some other really great brands out there, I will say boldly and really without apology that there are lots of very good reasons why, quoting our CEO Sam Wiley, we are called Wiley's finest and not Wiley's okayest. Uh, today, I would just like to talk with you about three of them. So first of all, uh, we employ a gold standard of sustainability practices from ship to shelf, meaning that the fish that we use are third party certified to be from an exceptionally well managed and well caught source or wild caught source, excuse me. Um, and it's both traceable and sustainable. Secondly, our products are 100% fished in the USA by American fishers and manufactured in, in an Ohio-based family-owned and operated facility by American workers. And I will tell you that the Wiley family has been making exceptional quality dietary supplement ingredients for over 25 years, so they really know what they're doing. We don't expect you to just take our word for it that we are Wiley's finest. Everything that we make is third-party tested and it's certified for purity and potency so that you can be assured that everything you get from Wiley's Finest truly is the very best. I wanna talk a little more about sustainability. So we see and hear that word all the time, right? And we assume that those who use the word sustainability in relation to their products or practices are really trying to do something good for our environment. But what is it actually that makes us, uh, that actually makes fishing sustainable? According to the Marine Stewardship Council or MSC, and you'll see their little labels up there on that beautiful fish at that fish counter. Um, so MSC, which it's a non-global, it's a global nonprofit organization that is established specifically to address the ongoing problem of unsustainable fishing. And it's, a, um, it's an organization that we also use to certify both our fish oil products and our manufacturing facility. Now, according to them, sustainable fishing means leaving enough fish in the ocean, uh, respecting habitats, and ensuring that people who depend on fishing can maintain their livelihoods, all very important points. Wiley's Finest is proud to carry the most Marine Stewardship Council certified products of any other brand on the market. Now, sustainable fishing practices are so important to the Alaskan economy that they are actually written into the state constitution. 
Uh, they have been working hard at doing this and improving the system for more than 40 years. And that is evidenced by an impressive track record of managing sustainable catch levels year over year. They only allow American owned vessels to fish in their waters and they have ensured that the ecosystem in their fisheries is preserved through exhaustive research and study. Um, they have even created a total win-win quota system that incentivizes fishers for fishing responsibly. If you haven't ever heard the term bycatch, uh, I'm sure that you are at least aware of the idea of it. Essentially what I'm talking about is when fishers catch anything in their nets that they didn't intend to catch. Now that could either be a, another species of fish or it could be anything from marine birds to sea lions and anything you can imagine in between. And it's a huge problem. As you can see on this chart um, up here, the global marine fisheries report as much as 40% bycatch, which is just unbelievable to me. Um, but even our US fisheries estimate between 17 and 22%, and that is still shameful. It's amazing to me that in light of that, the wild Alaskan pollock fishery is able to keep their bycatch down to no more than 1%, um, which is amazing. Now, interestingly, it's been my experience that most people that I talk to have never even heard of wild Alaskan pollock. But despite the fact, um, despite that fact, it is the most prolific species in the cod family. And believe it or not, it's the fifth most consumed fish in the American diet. In fact, not that I would ever recommend it, but if you have ever even had um, a fish sandwich at McDonald's that is made from this wild Alaskan pollock. It's caught in the pristine waters of the Bering Sea off of the northern coast of, coast of Alaska. And every single piece and part of that fish is utilized to, prov to provide uh, some sort of consumable product uh, such as fish roe, uh, which is the most valuable part of the fish, actually, um, and it's a traditional Japanese delicacy. Um, they also have another product called Serini. Um, you may not know that name, but if you've ever seen imitation seafood in the grocery store, that's what this is. It's essentially um, a type of fish sausage, um, also very popular in Japan. And then, of course, our frozen fillets that I just discussed. Uh, also, um, part of that is a part of the fish, some of the, some of the bones in that is made into fish meal for agricultural purposes. But once all of that is done, all the leftovers, um, which just include the head and the liver, are then very carefully processed for the raw fish oil that is then shipped to our plant in Ohio, where it's used to manufacture our entire line of fish oil products. The value of using a single species source means that sustainability isn't just a bold claim for Wiley's Finest, um, but in fact, that can be fact that can be backed up with, you know, with fisheries assessments and bycatch reports and sound ecological. I can't even say it, ecological fisheries management. Um, you know, this, it's, it's all tracked and, and if you're ever interested, you can actually ask to see that. Because of the simplicity and the transparency of the Marine Stewardship Council chain of custody program, um, which truly does track the fish from ship to shelf, you can rest assured that the fish oil supplements that you trust that you get from us and you trust us to make for you are exactly what they claim to be. Uh, one thing that really sets our fish oil apart from most others on the shelf is the fact that it is essentially a byproduct of the fishing industry. Um, all of the wild Alaskan pollock are caught really for human food as we just talked about. And as I just mentioned a couple of slides ago, um, the fact is that most of the fish oil brands out there come from what is called a reduction fishery, where the fish are caught 
just for the purpose of making fish oil and or farmed fish food. The target fish population that's used for this type of reduction fishing is the South American anchovy. They, you find it uh, off the coast of Chile and Peru, and the operation there makes up about 60 to 65% of the global fish oil supply. Um, it's called actually the most heavily exploited fish in world history. And sadly, Andy Sharpless, who is the CEO of Oceana, has reported that one third of all of the wild fish caught on earth end up as fish meal or fish oil. And of that, 81% goes to feed farmed fish. 81%. That just blows me away. And then if you look on the back label of most of your fish oil supplements, you will find that the ingredients aren't even labeled by specific species, but rather they'll have some statement that goes something like, uh, contains fish, and then in parentheses, anchovy, sardine, or mackerel. So you don't really know what you're getting. Wiley's finest wild Alaskan fish oil products are all made with Alaska Omega, which is the Wiley family's branded omega-3 bulk ingredient, and it's made exclusively from wild Alaskan pollock oil. We don't own the ships, but rather we partner with some awesome fishers who sail right out of the port of Seattle, Washington. And if you have ever had the opportunity to see what goes on in one of these big fishing trawlers, it's pretty darn amazing. Uh, there's a highly technical processing plant right on board. And literally from the time that each load comes onto the ship to the time that the fish is filleted and frozen and the fish oil is rendered and ready to be shipped to us for processing, it's just a matter of a couple of hours. And that's really important for freshness. Once the raw product gets to our manufacturing facility in Coshocton, Ohio, it is molecularly distilled to remove any contaminants, after which it goes through a proprietary process that includes cold extraction, purification, and concentration. Um, after that, it's either bottled as a liquid on site there in Coshocton, or it is sent to one of our trusted partners that we work with for encapsulation. And here's something that I love talking about. So do you remember a few minutes ago when I was talking about sustainability and how all of the pieces and parts of the fish are used in the process uh, that creates little to no waste? Another huge part of the Wiley's Finest commitment to sustainability actually lies in our biodiesel program. All of our formulations, with the exception of one, are concentrated, meaning that the EPA and DHA and uh, sometimes other um, fatty acids are isolated from the raw product in order to get the high concentrations that we've been able to provide. But there are always leftovers. And all of those leftover fats are transformed into biodiesel and then shipped off for distribution to fuel school buses or delivery trucks and things like that. Which means that, again, there's nothing wasted. And, um, and that is something that's certainly really important to me. Now I'm going to change gears just a little bit and ask you a question. So do you know how to tell for sure if any supplement on the shelf, including ours, um, has ingredients and nutrients that it says it has in the potency that it says? Now I'm sure you've all read an article or listened to a news broadcast where the journalist was just broadly blasting the supplement industry because one or more careless and unethical manufacturer or manufacturers allowed their products on the shelf without making sure that the contents were consistent with what was listed on the label. And it makes you wonder, right? And even maybe worry a little bit. The answer and solution though is super simple. You'll see that little blue label up in the right hand corner there, the NSF contents tested and certified mark that's uh, that is found on the labels of all of our products and also on the uh, labels of other quality supplements that you'll see on your shelves there. And it is your assurance that the product has been tested by one of the most respected independent certification organizations in existence today. Each and every Wiley's Finest Formula is independently, independently certified by NSF 
to meet label claims for its nutrients and it is tested to be safe from harmful contaminants. We are so proud to offer a, a line of truly exceptional quality supplements that stand out as an industry leader in third party GMP or good manufacturing practices, certification and testing. And that about covers it for Wiley's Finest. Does anybody have any questions before I go on to talk about omega-3s? Is somebody talking? Did I miss it? I'm so sorry if I can't hear you. Okay, I think we're good. All right. So omega-3s. Um, what is omega-3 and why do I need it? Why is my doctor and everybody else telling me that I need to take this stuff? Um, first, I want to introduce you to Dr. Jorn Dyerberg and two of his research buddies, uh, Hans Olaf Bang and Ace Brandom Nielsen. So in the early days of Dr. Dyerberg's career, his studies led him to be very curious about why it was that Although the current thinking of the day pointed directly to a relationship between a high fat diet and the incidence of coronary heart disease, the Inuit Eskimo population seemed to suggest something completely different. Um, it all started back in 1968 when Dr. Dyerberg saw a lead paper in a Danish medical journal, journal um, that focused on the health aspect of Greenlanders and it showed a low incidence of coronary heart disease uh, compared to the Danish population. So he was pretty intrigued with that. And in spite of uh, the Inuit traditional diet, which consisted mostly of fatty fish and seal meat, which is also very fatty, the heart-related death rate among their men was uh, between 45 and 64 years of age was only 5.3%. Now, just to give you a little bit of perspective, at that same time, their U.S. counterparts, who obviously were eating a very different diet from, from that, um, had an alarmingly different result. Actually, 40% of all deaths in American men of that same age range and the same time period were absolutely linked to coronary heart disease. So... Dr. Dyerberg got together with his two friends, which you see here in this photo, and he decided to go on an awesome dog sled adventure up into Greenland so that they could do some research and try to figure out what was up. Uh, so they went from village to village, actually, setting up a tent with a makeshift lab, and they collected 130 blood samples, which they took back to Denmark for further study. They published their initial findings in the Lancet Journal, um, and it, that showed that the blood cholesterol levels of the Inuits actually were lower than the Danish population, but really not by very much. And Dr. Dyerberg felt that there had to be something more to this story. So back in some dusty corner of his lab, he had an old gas chromatic graph machine, and um, he pulled that out and dusted it off. And he uh, used it to do a two-year fatty acid analysis that ended up um, producing evidence of two new fatty acids that he hadn't even ever seen before. And those were actually EPA and DHA. Now about that same time, there was another study published by three Danish scientists, um, some of his colleagues, I guess, that were showing how omega-6 fatty acids help produce a certain type of what we call prostaglandin, which helps blood platelets stick together and cause the blood to clot, which is a very good thing if you, know, if you have a cut, right? But not so much when it, um, when it happens in your veins and arteries causing a heart attack or a stroke. Um, and then so suddenly the idea popped into Dr. Dyerberg's head like, what if the new fatty acids he found actually made prostaglandins that didn't favor clotting? Um, in his mind, this would mean two things. First of all, that the Eskimos would bleed longer when they got cut. And secondly, they wouldn't have as high of a risk for clotting in their blood vessels. In other words, they would have less incidence of cardiac disease. 
So he decided to do some additional research uh, where he studied the clotting times of both the Eskimos and the Danish subjects by making little cuts on their arms to see how long they would bleed. Now, I'm not sure how he talked them all into that, but that's what he did. And lo and behold, the, um, the Danish subjects bled for an average of four minutes. And not surprising, the Eskimos who had much higher levels of EPA in their tissues bled for about eight minutes. So he had his answer. And these new and revolutionary findings were published and that was the birth of the omega-3 story. Since that time, there have been more randomized controlled trials done on omega-3s than any other nutrient in human history, including vitamin D, calcium, and probiotics, believe it or not. But despite the ever-increasing attention given to the subject through both medical advice and what we are able to learn on our own as Americans, we are still well below where we need to be in getting enough omega-3 EPA and DHA, which we will learn a little more about shortly. But looking at this graph, you can see that the blue band in the center denotes what we call the zone of consensus or an average of daily intake recommended by nutritional ex experts. More than half the countries listed, you will see, including places with easy access to the ocean, like the Netherlands and Switzerland, and even Greece, um, fall below the blue line, while Japan, Iceland, and other fish-eating countries are at the top. The US, as you can see, falls below the middle of the pack with an estimated average daily intake of only 120 to 150 milligrams of EPA and DHA. Low EPA and DHA intake is a huge deal. Um, in 2010, there was actually a very interesting study called the, De the DENY study, where they looked at deaths related to certain lifestyle factors and tried to quantify how many lives could be saved every year if people just simply changed their diets. As you can see in the slide, second only to excess sodium intake is heart disease deaths from low EPA and DHA intakes at an estimated 84,000. This study happened about the time when there was a huge paradigm shift in thinking uh, regarding saturated fats. So then how does EPA work in the body? Omega-3 fatty acids are special types of fats that are essential for the optimum nutrition in every cell of our bodies, but our bodies don't produce them. What that means is that we need to consume them in one way or another. And um, so there are many different omega-3s, but the two we hear most about and which our bodies seem to need the most of are EPA and DHA. Now there are big long words, uh, names for those that I'm not even gonna to try to um, pronounce for you. We're just gonna call them EPA and DHA. Um, Omega-3s actually exist in both seafoods and in certain plant foods, such as dark leafy greens and flax seeds. Today, we're gonna to discuss both types and how the two are metabolized in our bodies differently. To begin with, um, most omega-3s that come from marine sources are EPA and DHA, but those that we get from plant sources are typically ALA, which by the way, can be converted into EPA and DHA in the body. The caveat is that it takes a great deal of energy for that to take place and the conversion rate is typically very low. But interestingly, EPA and DHA are always found together in nature and they work synergistically in our bodies. We need them both very much uh, for maximum health benefit, and typically we need a little more EPA than we do DHA. As you can see in this slide, EPA has many great attributes from supporting mood and brain focus to helping improve outcomes in heart health, joint health, and tissue health. Now what all these issues have in common is one thing, and you probably guessed it, and that's inflammation. EPA, when it's consumed in sufficient quantities, can help reduce inflammation by a couple of different mechanisms, which I won't go into too deeply right now. 
But the long and short of it is that EPA competes in the cells for an enzyme that is needed in order to create inflammation. Now by obstructing the activation of this enzyme, um, we are using the same mechanism of action that happens when you take corticosteroids. So consequently, by keeping the tissue levels of EPA up in your body, you may be able to reap many of the benefits of corticosteroids without all the side effects. DHA, on the other hand, isn't so much about abating inflammation as it is, um, as it has another very important function, and that is of being a vital structural component of the human brain, eyes, and skin. More than 90% of the omega-3s in the brain are DHA, and of the brain's nearly 60% total fat content, 25% actually is DHA, which is pretty amazing. Uh, that is why we know that DHA is a critical nutrient for pregnant moms while their babies are growing their brains, as well as their eyes and nervous systems, and even their immune systems. We also know that DHA is super important for all children and adults because it supports healthy cognition and is a structural part of the myelin sheaths that cover and protect the nerve cells in the brain. Most industrialized countries have at least some type of daily recommended intake of EPA and DHA, with the exception of the United States. As you can see in this chart, some countries like Japan and Korea seem to have a much better understanding of the importance of high omega-3 intake than the rest of us do. Is it really surprising then that here in the United States we have 20 times more adverse heart events than they do in Japan? However, even though we don't have a US recommended daily intake for omega-3, there are some leading health organizations that have published specific recommendations for different de demographics. As an example, the American Heart Association recommends 1,000 milligrams per day for adults with documented cardiovascular heart disease, and two to 4,000 milligrams per day for anybody with high tri triglycerides. I think it's also interesting to note that the American Psychiatric Association recommends for the general population that we eat fish at least two times per week. Eating cold water fatty fish is one really good way of getting your omega-3s. And as you can see here, a three and a half ounce serving of some of our favorites can make a significant difference in our intake of EPA and DHA because as we know, food is always best. Pretty much all fish has some amount of omega-3, but if you look at the bottom of the chart, you will notice that tilapia, which is pretty popular here in the US, may not be your best choice if you're looking to really step up your omega-3 levels. And I'm not really sure what swai is, but it has even less than tilapia. Now I've been talking for a while about fish and fish oil which has been pretty much the sole focus of, Filey, of Wiley's Finest um, for the past eight years. But we also understand that there are people out there who choose a more plant-focused diet. Now we know from reliable published sources that omega-3 levels are historically low in vegans, vegetarians, flexitarians, and others who don't eat fish or take fish oil. In fact, it has been determined that even vegetarians who include eggs and dairy in their diets are only consuming about 20 milligrams of DHA per day. And both vegans and vegetarians are only able to get about that same amount or 20 milligrams of EPA per day, which added together is still well below the 500 milligrams per day that is recommended by global health experts for combined EPA DHA. I believe I mentioned earlier that eating certain plant-based foods like flax and chia may increase your levels of ALA or alpha-linoleic acid. However, your body has limited efficiency in the process of converting that ALA to EPA. Um, so I don't remember if I actually mentioned SDA, um, but SDA is another, um, another omega-3 fatty acid, which also converts to EPA, and it has a much higher conversion rate. 
The important thing to remember, regardless of your dietary preferences, is that if you do not eat omega-3 fish at least two times a week, you really should seriously consider taking a good quality omega-3 supplement. And I'll be going over just a few options that you'll find on the Wiley's Finest section of your omega-3 shelf. I first like to introduce you to our newest product that we're very excited about called Catch Free Omega. So Catch Free Omega is a full spectrum blend of D DHA al algae oil um, with ahi flour, which is the source of the SDA that I spoke of earlier. And then some other added nutrients as well. Um, it's vegan approved and non-GMO, making it an excellent option for anybody with a plant-focused diet or somebody um, who just doesn't care for fish oil. I have taken it myself and it's really good. This particular product um, is our yummy tropical mango flavored liquid and it has a total of 2300 milligrams per serving of omega-3s from DHA, ALA, and SDA. Plus, it has 140 milligrams of GLA and 25 micrograms or 1,000 international units of vitamin D3, which is always a great addition. And for anybody who prefers gel caps to liquid, we also have our catch-free omega full-spectrum omega-3 soft gel, uh, which fe features 725 milligrams of total omega-3s, 10 milligrams of GLA, and 25 micrograms each of vitamin D3 and vitamin K27 and in the form of Mani Q7. Um, being the omega-3 experts that they are, the Wiley has really spent a lot of time and effort searching the globe to be able to bring the absolute best in innovative vegan options for omega-3 nutrition. This is the list of our trusted partners from that we source our ingredients from. And, um, which we use in our catch-free products. So I just wanted to call out that these are manufacturers who are truly skilled experts and who adhere to the absolute highest US and international quality standards. And like Wiley's Finest, they really care about their products and their customers. Um, some of our fish oil products that you might be interested in. This is actually our number one bestseller, um, Wiley's Finest Wild Alaskan Fish Oil Peak EPA. Um, this is and always has been our best-selling formula. Um, one of the things that people really like about it is that it's kind of that magic thousand milligram serving in a one and done capsule. So it, um, it makes it really easy and convenient. It comes in uh, in different forms. You can either get uh, a one month supply, a two month supply, or even a four month supply. And if you're headed out of town or you just like to keep it um, in your purse or your bag, we also have a travel size of, of 10, uh, 10 little soft gels in a, in a little package that'll fit right in your purse or in your pocket. Another capsule that we have that is really popular is our Easy Swallow Minis. And this is, a, this is actually one that I really love and I, I took it for a long time because I'm one of those people who cannot swallow a big pill. Um, they're great for anybody who, you know, it, you know, whether you can't swallow a big pill or maybe you're, you've heard about fish oil, you've heard about omega-3s and you maybe want to try it, but you want to, kind of just dip your toe into it. It's great for that. Um, it's great for anyone, you know, for your, maybe an, um, if you're just, uh, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm thinking of, of aging population who, you know, they have so many pills to take and maybe they need something a little smaller, smaller as well. Um, so the Easy Swallow Minis, they come in uh, 60 soft gels and 180 soft gels. Um, and um, it's, a really, it's a really great product. But if you don't like to take pills or maybe you need a, 
a higher concentration. This is also one of our best selling products. It is our um, peak omega-3 liquid. And the great thing about this is there's 2,150 milligrams of EPA and DHA combined in just one small teaspoon. Um, most people are pleasantly surprised at the neutral taste of this formula and, it, and the lighter texture um, that it has. It's great for anybody who is struggling with inflammation issues. Um, anybody who's a serious athlete and just needs to get more of the um, more of these omega-3 uh, fatty acids in their body. Um, and anybody else who just needs a higher dose of, of EPA and DHA. It mixes well with food or yogurt, um, or you can put it in a smoothie. Um, it really has about zero taste. Um, it says that it is lemon flavored. I would really call it more of a lemon essence, so it's not overly flavored and it really is pleasant. Um, you can get it in a four ounce size or an eight ounce size. And uh, it's, like I said, it's just a really great formula. How are we doing on time? Um, yeah, I think you're fine to <clears throat> do a little bit, do a just few a more minutes on, on this, yeah. Okay, all right. Well, hey everybody, this is our new Wiley Spinus Bold Heart by Cardio Smile. Um, it doesn't have any omega-3s in it at all, but what it is is a very simple combination of pine-derived plant sterols and water, and it has been clinically proven to lower cholesterol levels, super easy to use, and easy to take with you anywhere you need to go. Um, just so we understand a little bit about how it works, let's talk a little bit about sterols. So sterols come from both animal and plant sources. And in plants, they're called plant sterols and they have names like beta cytosterol, campus sterol, and stigma sterol. They can either be free sterols, like you will find in the bold heart, or alternately, they can come in the form of plant sterol esters, uh, which are bound to unsaturated fat. And um, that's the way that you'll find it in our original Wiley's Finest Cholesterol Support Formula. In our human bodies, it's called cholesterol. And, um, and our bodies need it. We use it to make certain steroids like cortisol. And it's also used to make sex hormones and vitamin D. Um, our bodies need a certain amount of cholesterol for those very important functions, and we are very good at making what we need, but the problem seems to come from ingesting more than our bodies can use from the food that we eat. One of the cool things about plant sterols is that they have the ability to literally replace the cholesterol from our food uh, in our gut, making it harder for that cholesterol to be absorbed into the bloodstream. Another really great thing that it does is to keep the cholesterol that is naturally in our bile during the process of digestion from being reabsorbed. And, um, and then it's just moved out of our bodies with our waste. The dosage of plant sterols that has been studied and proven effective in lowering cholesterol levels is two grams or 2000 milligrams, which is exactly the dose that is in our product. And that, um, and that is what is now recommended by the U.S. National Cholesterol Education Program of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Also, um, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics recommends adding sterols to a healthy diet, um, either through food or through supplements, without adding any additional calories. Plant sterols taken in this dosage has been proven effective in lowering cholesterol levels, even in people taking statins, either by prescription or with red yeast rice supplements. Um, and it actually can help them work better. Uh, as a side note, plant sterols also rec are also recommended for people with high blood sugar and cholesterol issues together. Now, normally we have to be very careful about what we say a supplement can or cannot do, but in this case, I can tell you that the Federal Drug Administration, or the Food and Drug Administration, has recently issued what we call a qualified health claim, which reads, 
and I'm going to quote this, um, products containing at least 400 milligrams per serving of plant sterols and stanols eaten twice a day with meals for a daily intake of at least 800 milligrams as part of a diet low in saturated fat and cholesterol may reduce the risk of heart disease. So that's pretty, pretty good stuff. Uh, there are many different ways that you can get sterols in your diet. Um, you'll see them all the time in the grocery store in foods and beverage products that have been fortified, if you will, with other plant, with either um, plant sterols or stanols. Um, and you can even find them in the form of sterile capsules, which you have to take several of every day to even get close to two grams per day. Uh, that's why we would absolutely recommend Wiley's Finest Bold Heart. Um, as you can see up in the, in the picture there, um, they come in little stick packs, if you will. Super easy to just, you know, stick in your pocket or your purse, take it with you. Um, and you can either just open that little baby up and, and uh, chug it down by itself because in, it, it has no flavor. It's, um, it's yeah, really easy to do. Um, and because it has no flavor, you can also, you know, put it in your favorite drink. If you um, have your morning coffee or tea or a smoothie, um, you can put it in yogurt. You'd never even know it was there. Um, you can even just, you know, put it on any of your food, anytime, anywhere, and it, it will do the job for you. Um, so super, super convenient. And that is what I have.